about episode 114. I hope you are very well this week and I hope if you're in the UK particularly that you are safe from the storms which have been raging and are going to be raging uh, tomorrow. So I'll be driving down to the southwest of England to Halsey in Somerset which isn't too close to the coast uh, for my hurdy-gurdy course and we're hoping that everything's going to be okay because we have a big storm hitting um, the southwest even with a red alert and stay at home warnings if you're near the coast so hopefully um, it won't be too dramatic but you might hear a little bit of uh, wind <laughs> raging through the tune today because it's uh, it's not too bad and the boat has been fine um, it's not you know moving around too much but uh, there's a lot of wind out there. So last week lots of people on the comments were saying well what do I hope to learn from the hurdy-gurdy course? Well a lot, everything, uh, <laughs> is the answer. So I thought I would show you one of the tunes I've been working on for the course today and also tell you, talk you through a little bit of how I've been practicing it and all the things that I'm hoping to be corrected by Johannes Hellman, the uh, brilliant teacher who I'm going to be with. So he sent out to us this music here called Djurstala uh, Posken, um, which means, I think that it's from Djurstala, I'm going to be pronouncing this wrong, I'm really sorry Johannes and everybody who uh, knows their Swedish, so it'll mean that it's a Posca from this uh, place, I just looked it up, it has a really beautiful uh, 17th century wooden church. So, first thing, seeing all of these notes that I'm going to approach, I'm going to put that back there so I can see them to talk to you, uh, is fingering. So how to come with my left hand to find the notes on the hurdy-gurdy. Now this is, uh, hurdy-gurdy is always a bit of a change for me because on all of the other instruments like nickel harper and cello that I play, my little finger would play the highest note and my first finger would play the lowest note. But as I take that over to the hurdy, you can see that my first finger has the highest note. So. And this way it's quite similar to like the left hand of a piano, if you play piano, um, which I don't much. <laughs> so I always need to turn my brain upside down a little bit to do it. So then I'll just play you a little bit of the beginning phrase of this to show you some of the questions that I have about fingering because on the hurdy-gurdy I'm basically completely self-taught. So I've come up with ideas and I'm really excited to be having people who know what they're doing, <laughs> having a look at what I'm doing to say, tell me how it can be better. So, you'll see lots of times there where I sort of went around and over myself trying to get these notes and I'm trying to get the smoothest line possible and one where I can make a nice timing, I can make bring the rhythm out. So those are what I've come up with and that's the sort of thing that I just want to check out. That's the sort of thing I'm working on for that. The second thing mainly is um, with the uh, the wheel. <laughs> so how I'm moving the the crank, how my what kind of a shape my hand is in. So I'm just going to turn a little bit. So as I turn, as I turn, sorry, as I turn, I want to make sure that I'm doing everything I can to keep my arm healthy because, well, for one, I don't have an awful lot of. Uh, <laughs> muscle power on it. So I need very much not to be doing anything that could cause me any pain if I do it a lot. And that's certainly something that playing Gurdy for three days is going to illuminate if I am doing anything wrong and see how people can just make sure I've got the angles right there. As you know in Hurdy with the trumpet, with the buzzing kind of sound we can make that sort of thing. I'd like to just refine that, uh, make sure that my buzz is crisp and that I'm doing everything right in terms of how I produce it with my hand and also get lots of ideas. So as I've been exploring this um, Joost alla Posken then I've been looking at a dun da da dun da da dun da da rhythm which I'm aware I do on lots of things partly because I love it and it sounds good on lots of tunes but 
I just like to, you know, expand my toolkit of beats, basically, that I can put with it. I've used this one specifically because it's a Swedish tune, and on the nickel harper I would always bow da 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 when I'm playing, uh, playing polskas on that instrument, so I've sort of translated my nickel harper bowing to hurdy-gurdy, but that's just my idea, basically. A couple of other things... Oh, <laughs> I've got a big scarf on because I've, uh... I've lost weight recently, so the strap's actually a bit big, so I've just tried to stuff as much fabric as, as I can to steady it, but uh, it would be good to look at how I sit with the instrument as well. So all of those things, basically, is what I'm looking to gain from the course. And so this, uh, you're going to hear now, just Alan Posca, is the second tune I've been practicing of the three tunes that Johannes sent. And next week I will give you the third one, but I might also go back over these two and just, uh, just show you how my technique has hopefully expanded for a few days of lessons. So here goes, and uh, thank you very much, hope you enjoy! <laughs> 